Good morning, fellow programmers. Thank you for joining me. I'm T Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4, and you can download it from python.org slash get it. Today's focus will be on factories, what they are and how they're used. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything is unclear. All right, a factory, what is it? Well, it's a design pattern in which you let a function determine which class to create. In other words, the program, not the programmer, figures out which class is going to be created. This will make sense in a bit. So for now, let's crack open idle and start with an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file on the desktop and call it small factory example underscore zero one dot py. Okay, and save it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple classes. First base class, then a couple subclasses. So we're gonna do this using the type creation method, which we discussed in the last lesson. So let's type base class is equal to type open parentheses, quotations, base class, the same name, comma, open parentheses, object, comma, in parentheses, comma, open close squiggly bracket, close parentheses, enter. And now we're going to create the subclasses. So C1 is equal to type C1. It's going to inherit from the base class we just created comma in the tuple, squiggly bracket, x as a string, colon, and assign it a value of one. In the squiggly brackets, and then in parentheses, enter, and then C2 is actually gonna be pretty much the exact same, so just copy and paste that line, and then we're just gonna assign this x value 30, just so we know they're different, and change that second name right there to C2, perfect. Now after this, we're gonna go ahead and create a function that's gonna determine which class to return. So type def my factory open parentheses and then in there I'm going to just type my bool in parentheses colon and what this is saying is hey we're going to pass in a boolean into the arguments enter and then type return c1 open close parentheses and then we're going to do something a little strange in that we're going to compress an if statement and an else statement all into one single line. So after that we're going to type if my bool else c2 open close parentheses and what this is saying is we're going to create an instance of c1 if my bool so if this is true then it's going to use c1 else we're going to return c2 this is a very cool way to shorten up your code if you want to compress things into a single line if they're very short so next we're going to go ahead and call this method so type m is equal to my factory the function we just created open parentheses and type true in the arguments parentheses in parentheses enter v is equal to my factory and then open parentheses and then type false for this one close parentheses and then finally we're just going to type print m dot x comma v dot x save it now let's shrink it down and run it press f5 to run perfect so there was no compiling errors and we got back 1 and 30 which is just what we thought we passed in true so the class c1 will be returned where it has x as a value of 1. And then for v, we passed in false, meaning that c2 would be returned, and then x would have a value of 30. Perfect! So the key points to take away from this is that these subclasses must inherit from a common base class. Reason being is in other languages like C, C++, and Java, you must explicitly say what the type is of the variable. And so you'd say it was in uh, this base class type. And then the function would determine which of these subclasses to return. All right, so why use a factory? Well, it allows for stuff to be created on the fly and not have the programmer hard code everything. It also removes a huge duplication of code that could be potentially within classes doing this same check over and over again. So it's just much cleaner. Finally, it may require information that the classes do not have access to. All right, so now I'd like to take a sidestep and go over a decorator called class method. It's a way to create a function that may be called without having to instantiate or create an instance of a class. All right, so go ahead and save this file and we're gonna open up a new one. Save this to the desktop as class method example. And now we're gonna create a class using the old method by typing class my class colon enter and then at symbol class method and you'll know you've typed it right if it turns purple right here. 
enter and then type def print ham our go to function and then type open parentheses self close parentheses colon enter print and then of course ham and enter enter and now we're going to go ahead and call that function by typing my class dot print ham open close parentheses and so we're accessing the class and then accessing the function within it called print ham without having to create an instance of it or assign it to a variable let's go ahead and save it shrink it down and run it boom and it printed ham beautiful so this decorator at class method allows us to call functions within classes without having to instantiate them awesome all right so after you save that file go ahead and close it and go back to the old file that we had open so now we're moving back to factories now we're going to create a more complex form of a factory the factory we created up above is simple but it doesn't allow us enough flexibility for instance if we had hundreds of classes that we needed to go through that if statement that we had would be too long to deal with or we'd have a huge chain of if statements that would be extremely messy and hard to deal with so instead let's develop a cleaner method of a factory and the way we're going to do this is by making a few adjustments to the factory we've already created so right after the base class I'm gonna go ahead and press enter a few times now I'm gonna go ahead and create a few definitions right here and then bind them to the class afterward so first I'm gonna type at class method enter and then type def check one open parentheses self comma my str close parentheses colon enter and then type return my str is double equal to open quotations ham close quotations and now I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this code and paste it right below it and just change the check one to check two and then change ham to sandwich perfect save that and then in the squiggly brackets of c1 I'm gonna go ahead and add in another argument and type check in it as a string colon and then type check one this way we bind that first function check one to a function called check within the class c1 and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that line from c1 into c2 and then change that one to a two finally I'm gonna adjust this definition for factory so that it'll run through by typing for CLS in base class dot underscore underscore sub classes underscore underscore open close parentheses colon enter and then type if CLS dot check open parentheses my str colon enter return CLS open close parentheses all right so what's this doing well it's saying for each subclass of base class call the function check within that class by passing in my string into the arguments and if it is true then we know to create an instance of that class and return it you gotta admit that's pretty slick <laughs> all right finally down below we're gonna change this true and false to be ham and then the false to be sandwich both as strings save and now let's shrink it down and run it beautiful Th so there's no compiling errors and it was the classes were created just as before so to recap what's going on we created a base class created functions for the subclasses that would allow us to determine if those subclasses or which subclass should be created next we define the factory which would determine which of the subclasses should be created by running those functions check within the class and then return that class if it returned true and lastly we created two instances of those classes perfect all right thank you so much for watching great job keeping up definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final challenges you are a brilliant programmer and I'm sure this will be a piece of cake for you leave me a comment below if this helped you at all and please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel it would really mean a lot to me thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive mm -hmm.